right hand side we get a grayscale image where we've got white areas have high NDVI values and if we look at the cursor value here you can see the values here move, changing as I move my cursor over the image and then we have areas where there's a low NDVI in this case we've got negative 0.45 we have the image looking black now sometimes it's not that great to look at a, a, a grayscale or black and white image just in terms of analyzing it and, and interpreting it so what we often do is to just change the color assignment so if we want to go to tools and color mapping and then if we go to envy color tables what we can do is just change this and given that we're looking at vegetation here we might um, have a look at the, the green to white um, now what we want is if we have our NDVI high values they're our, um, our higher vegetation or denser vegetation areas as the, they have the high NDVI so we'd probably like those to be a darker green so we'll just actually swap these values over here so we'll just invert that so the greener an area is in the image the higher the vegetation value is um, and now we see in some areas this becomes actually quite saturated as you can see obviously you've got the land versus the water here but we want to see a little bit more distinction between vegetated areas so we can always go to enhance for example and choose any one of those stretches that are available there so I might have a look at as you move your cursor over different areas so I might move over a water body for example if we come out here and you can see what values are associated with water there you can also see what values are associated with mangroves for example and then perhaps if we want to find an area of um, perhaps some burnt, veget burnt ground we'll have a look at what the NEVI values are there so I'm using the, the original Landsat image to help me navigate around because I can interpret features a little bit easier there and so we can see again what the NDVI value is as it says in the cursor location value the display number one is the NDVI and display number two is our color composition This video will show you how to compute the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI, using ArcGIS. NDVI can be computed from multispectral remotely sensed data using the formula of the near-infrared band minus the red band divided by the near-infrared band plus the red band. This yields values that range from negative 1 to positive 1 with negative 1 values indicating low vegetation content and values closer to 1 indicating high vegetation content. For the demonstration, we're going to be working with a Landsat 8 scene of Western Vermont. There's Lake Champlain, there's the Green Mountains over on the east covered by clouds, and there's Burlington, Vermont, Vermont's largest city. I created this image by stacking together bands 1 through 7 from Landsat 8. Now let's create a color infrared composite by going to the layer symbology and displaying the near infrared band to the red color gun, the red band to the green color gun, and the green band to the blue color gun, creating a 543 composite. There are a number of ways to compute NDVI in ArcGIS, but the quickest and easiest is to go to the Windows menu and activate the image analysis tools. The first thing to do in the image analysis tools is to click on the button to open the image analysis options. Once in the Image Analysis Options window, click on the tab for NDVI. We're going to uncheck the Use Wavelength button because we don't have wavelength metadata, and we're going to check the box for Scientific Output because we want our values to range from negative 1 to 1. We're then going to adjust the band combinations. Band 5 in this particular Landsat image corresponds to the near-infrared band, and band 4 corresponds to the red band. So we'll set band 5 and 4 as the infrared band and red band respectively, and then click OK to activate those settings. Now we're ready to compute NDVI. First, confirm that the image layer we want to use is selected, and then we'll scroll down and under Processing and click on the NDVI icon, which looks like a leaf. Using the image analysis functions, we can compute NDVI in a matter of seconds, but it's important to note that the NDVI layer that we've created is only temporary.
To improve the display of the NDVI layer, we're going to go into our layer properties and under the symbology tab, adjust the color ramp. We'll use a red to green color ramp where green represents high vegetation content and red low vegetation content. Let's examine our output. Lakes in urbanized areas that have very low amounts of vegetation have corresponding low NDVI values. Clouds also have low NDVI values. If we look in the shadowed areas of the clouds, we can see that NDVI values are impacted, meaning that within shadowed areas, the NDVI values tend to be lower than similar vegetation in non-shadowed areas. Zooming into downtown Burlington gives us a chance to look at NDVI values in an urbanized area. We see that the city center, which has very few large patches of vegetation, has low NDVI values, but surrounding areas, even residential areas with large tree canopy, do have higher NDVI values. Now let's move south to a landscape that's dominated more by agricultural land use. Those fields with active healthy crops have high NDVI values. NDVI values tend to be low in those fields where the crops have either been recently harvested exposing the bare soil or the crops are in poor health. Finally, we'll take a look at some wetland vegetation adjacent to a river. We see a mix of NDVI values, the lower NDVI values in those areas where we have predominantly water, and the higher NDVI values are those areas where the vegetation is obscuring the water. To make the NDVI layer permanent raster, we'll go back into the image analysis tools and click on the export icon. This launches the export raster data window. The first step is going to be to specify the location for this new raster file. After we've reset the location,